G'day everybody, Andy Ma here. Welcome to The Blueprint. Again, proudly brought to you by our friends at Hyundai. We are well and truly into season 2013. There's a lot to talk about already, so let's get started. Joining me again in the co-host chair, former champion and skipper of the club, Mark McClure. Uh, g'day again, sellers. How you going, Andy? I'm going OK. Um, 0-2 is not what we were hoping to be talking about, I guess, when we started again this year, but take the... Bottom line, out of the picture, mm. are you comfortable with the general competitiveness of what you've seen in the first two weeks? Absolutely. I mean, poor first half against Richmond was was detrimental to our to our result. Uh, I felt their game on Sunday was fantastic. It was one of the great games I watched mm, on TV. Was. I didn't actually go to the ground, ground but uh, I was glued to the screen. Both sides were hard at it. The other side was just a bit better, the Pies, yeah. and we, we must acknowledge that. But uh, we showed glimpses, could have won the game quite comfortably. A couple of little mistakes, and we'll go through some of those in a minute and talk about a few things. A few things that worry me about with Mick at the moment, I don't think he has a full handle on all the players yet, what they're capable of. That's understandable though, isn't it? A new coach, new group, and he wants to work them out himself. He doesn't want to be mm. you know, prejudiced by the views of others. He wants no. to see what they're capable of doing. Yeah, and I think the, in, in doing that, that's great. And, and we're actually finding out more about it them ourselves as well. Like Walker going down back, mm. uh, you know, Yaron being up forward, uh, also Hanson up forward. Uh, n no Warnock in the side. Mm. Instead of having Cruiser all the time. He wants to play Cruiser in the ruck all the time. Sometimes we can utilise other players. So it'll, it's an interesting. Hanson and all those other things that he's doing. Uh, uh, Bootsman playing down back. Yep. Uh, trying him out. And I, and I like that. But is he giving him a four-week block? Is he going to give him that chance to play right through and, 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 and uh, we'll, we'll find out exactly if they're good enough or not? Or is he just experimenting? Well, we're going to see the team will be selected for the Geelong game. Very, very shortly, we'll see what that side looks like and we'll wonder what sort of perseverance there'll be with one or two players. I think a few Carlton supporters probably expect some changes. Certainly, Heath Scotland's going to be back in the mix, so he mm. might put some pressure on maybe young Bootsmer and we'll see whether Levi Casbold, who we all think's got an upside but has struggled in the first two weeks, just to see whether he can will be persevered with. You talked about the big man set-up, and Matthew Kuzer, I think most people would agree, has been a real positive in the start of the season. He had his... A big test against Ivan Maric in week one. Uh, he was a dominant force come round two. Are you... This footage here is fantastic. Robbo, get it out. Diver, good forward sit, sit in front. And you'll see it come again. Simpson kicks the ball and all of a sudden Hanson comes forward. And in front of his men, hard to handle. Yep. Incredibly tough. And kicks truly, which was unusual week one for him. But he has, he's been fantastic up forward in the week he played. Uh, his his decision-making... Leaves a little bit to be desired. Are you comfortable? Have you got in your own mind how best the big man setup would work at Carlton? If it was your call and your call alone, yeah, my call. And we haven't seen Warnock yet, but he's no. been playing some good footy at VFL level yeah. and in the preseason and in the early season so far. What what would your big man setup look like in terms of the ruck division? Uh, Warnock would be my first ruck. So you'd have him in the yeah, ruck to in start the ruck. He'd do fifty percent of the time, and, and then I'd have uh, uh, Cruiser as, as a forward who plays half the game in the forward line and half the game in, in the ruck because he's such a good player around yep. the ground and you could utilise him at different times. Rowe would be the other one who I'd have there. Walker would be definitely there yep. as, a, as a lead up forward. You need a quick lead up forward who can tackle and chase and put pressure on. And yep. then you have the smalls. I mean, Yaron may stay, he may not, but uh, we know that, uh, there's a couple, that Gartlett, Gartlett is a fantastic player up there and he's improving. I don't think he actually knows how good he is. I agree with you. I agree with you. And they've been one of the good stories. Eddie, of course, broke his jaw in round one, played the game out with that incident, well, that, that injury after the incident occurred very early in the game. But between the three of them, um, Betts, Gartlett and Yaron, um, they're hard to beat. It's a nightmare for opposition. Look at this. Trying to get out of there is impossible. And that's what you want to see from your forwards. That's where Good, he hard hitting, right? tackling. Yeah. Uh, that's where he broke his jaw. Yeah, exactly right. But you can see Yaron there. And you can also see Garlett there. And they are tough to beat. I don't yep. care if you're tall, small or whatever. Yep. They're tough to beat pace. Yaron, I remember, I don't know whether you ever saw him. Under 18, when he was, when WA, when he played in the WA side at Teal Cup level or whatever it was called, in his year. They would often play him one out inside 50, clear the 50 metre zone, stick, get, get a comfortable match up on him, Not put a bad him at the idea. top of the square. Not he's a bad so idea. good one on one. He, he is. He's Strong. a terrific one on one player. Um, he's 
the whole Walker Yaron experiment mm. with with Walker back the first week forward the second mm. week and Yaron flipping the roles around has been one of the most interesting things I reckon we've seen in the first fortnight of the season. Yeah, and I and I think that uh, Yaron's about time to come back forward. He had that time down back to get some confidence to really build. He certainly got some. Mm. Probably could have won the game for us in the uh, in, against Richmond. Yeah. Probably should have won the game for us against Richmond, but uh, was just made a couple of blues in the end, a couple of errors that he. Sh- you would think he would get quite comfortable. You would, and nine times out of ten he would. You, you know, I've heard you talk about instinctive footballers yep. and natural footballers. There's an incident in the Collingwood game where Mark Murphy, the skipper, we'll talk about him in a minute, eventually yep. kicked a goal, but talk me through, sit here. through Tommy Bell here. Yeah, see, Tommy Bell it, it has to be told there by, by the captain, and, and that's what he's supposed to do, I suppose. He's been around a lot longer. Uh, and We'll get a replay. We'll get a replay we'll again as well, but you see him calling back Tommy Bell to do it. That should be an instinct. You should know straight away, he's got the ball, he's won the ball, he's free. Now, how can I protect yep. my teammate? Yep. And that should be the first thing. And I think that that's a legacy of some time in the past of playing for yourself, and we don't want that. If you're going to be a good side and, and feature in September, that's got to be your first thought all the time yeah. because 20 blokes can't carry the ball at once. It's, it's fascinating to watch a little incident like that in a game of footy, yeah. and you imagine what... Geelong might have done in that situation. Well, they know what to do. They they know exactly. And that's the... And Nick said it after the Collingwood game. Mm. That's exactly where we need to get. And it's all about a learning curve. You've got to remember where we finished Mm. in 2012 and where these sides like Collingwood finished in 2012. And that's the gap that we've got to make up. We never talk about the backman. Jamison and Henderson were sensational. Both of them were fantastic. And then Henderson went forward and kicked a goal as well Mm. at the end. So we've got some defence as well. Uh, We were probably let down in the midfield in the last quarter. And then we'll show the, the stuff about uh, Cruiser well, in the centre bounce. Well, let's have a look at it now. Let's have a look at it now. Because... That, that is a very, very interesting stuff. He wins, he dominates the centre bounce. That one dropped down and we got it through. He was a small drop down. Now he starts to bash. So the reason is because he can jump over the top of his opponent and do it quite comfortably. Well, guess what? That's not right. What you've got to do is actually use open up spaces. Say, so, right, uh, Gibbs, you've got to go to that spot. I'm going to hit it there. And push it. Because if you're so dominant, you get a free run out of the centre of the yeah. bounce. And, if, and, and the goals kicked from centre bounce takeaways is usually about 40% in, in the normal game. So uh, it's quite interesting. that Interaction from Blues fans. Remember, you can send in your questions via Twitter or email the club with the blueprint in the subject line at blues at carltonfc.com. Dot au. So as this week we asked, who's been your best performer in the opening two rounds? Anthony responded on Facebook, Jeff Garlett. And we had a tweet from Jade who agreed both Garlett and Yaron. Um, in terms of the overall impression that you've made in terms of Walker's the first two weeks, I reckon Walker's been, Walker's, been, been, Walker's been my best for a long, long time. I, I, I really like this kid. This is he got some talent, guy. this bloke. That's oh, 55. Know, before... 55 metres. You can't kick that round the corner 55 and land in the goal square. That 1%, was just brilliant. 1% of players in the AFL could do that. Uh, and he's one of them. Yep. And probably Buddy's the other. So how do you get into his head? He's always been, it struck me he's been a really shy kid yep. who doesn't hasn't necessarily wanted to impose himself on the, on this level. Yeah. How do you get into his head and say, mate, do you realise how good you can possibly be? There's a very old saying, saying, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So once you feel comfortable about your existence in a footy team, and I, start, I think he's just starting to do that. I think he likes Mick. Mick actually likes him. Yeah. He's actually starting to coach him and push him around. And he goes, well, how good am I? He's talking yeah. to me. Yeah. And I think that's a really good start. Yeah. So that is, uh, for me, uh, a real bonus because we'll see all those guys improve. Yep. Aaron Betts and Gartlett. Well, that would be exciting if that was the case. Another comment on Facebook was from Sean Lewis who says Walker filled a void down back first week filled one up forward the next we, we saw the year that he had in 2011 when he was mm. a real real standout player not only for Carlton but across the competition he had some injuries last year that held him back and he that was quite soon to find his role but he's another one of those X Factor players if we're going to be a, if we're going to have a role to play in 2013 we need Andrew Walker to be a dominant player. I think he's in our top five or six players, to tell you the truth, uh, for, for impact. He has enormous impact on the game. He's not a, he doesn't run around and, 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 and give little impact. He smashes in, he takes yeah, high marks, yeah. he kicks goals. Uh, he's quick, he's incredibly quick, and he's, and he's really, he's about 190 centimetres. He's yeah. not a midget, he's, no. uh, he's a good size. So he can play both ends, but his best value is uh, uh, up forward. Could because be, that's where you hurt people. You mentioned earlier, could he be that push up forward? Mick, you know, we went really yeah. hard at Travis Cloak at the end of last year. 
Apparently we had a bit of a snip around uh, Quinton Lynch as well. Yeah. Could Walker in the interim be that player? Has he, has he got no. the smarts to be that sort of hit up, turn around, get him on the counter attack type forward? I think he can run anywhere inside inside the forward half. That's yeah. his go. And, and you've got to let him do that. But I, li- I really like him starting from the goal square. Because yeah. he's, he's a basic player. He, look, and sometimes you've got to give people simple instructions. Very, and that's seriously, because yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise they just go off the, on their own sort of direction and, and they get lost. Yep. Uh, and I think sometimes he can do that. So simple instructions for walks, and he is an impact player, no one doubt. of the best. No doubt about that. Jai sent in a tweet. Uh, he says, Judd, as always, but also Jamison with zero goals scored against him on cloak and Revolt. We shouldn't underestimate that, and you didn't. You mentioned the two key defenders mm. um, earlier. If we're going to be a good side again this year, we need Henderson and Jamison to play most of the season and play in the sort of form that they're playing. Jamo, when he's in this kind of command of his body uh, and feeling good about himself physically, Mm. he reminds everybody that it was only about 12 months ago that he was getting himself into some sort of All-Australian contention. Well, there's no-one can beat him. He's in this sort of form and and fitness. He's a a huge man. He's got good pace, uh, disciplined, and I like that Mm. because that sets a good example for the rest of the team. He's a good leader, and they like him to do that. So, And Henderson's learning. Mm. Henderson's getting better. Uh, He came as a forward. We've sent him down back. You know what? He'll end up a forward, but it'll be another year or so's Mm. time because that's where he, he, he... People learn down back. And then you go forward and apply because you, you work on the best players in the competition. They show you how to play. Plus, you played in sides that had great defensive units, they, the Southies and the Duels and, and all that. They played together mm. week in, week out. They got mm. to understand one mm. another. They knew when the other one was in a bit of trouble, when to come across and be third man up and get across off his own man, to, all that sort of stuff. The more these two play with one another, the yep. better they're going to be. No doubt about it. And it's instinct. And you, and you learn that through experience. Um, I, I'm surprised these days there's so much, so much structure and so much you've got to kick it here, you've got to kick it through this hole because mm-hmm. this has got to be this and there's so many meetings I- I'm surprised <laughs> the players can keep up with half of it seriously because uh, it, this game is built on instinct you love it and you, and you see the best yep. the best come out of them and that's what well, we want to see Well they're going to be challenged by the best this week I know they're not the defending Premier but I was lucky enough to see Geelong come from 41 points down against North on Sunday so as we get the Cats this week we're 0-2 <laughs> Well, I love I, it. I reckon it's well within our grasp to knock them over this week. And I'll be in the minority about this. It's no. a huge test for us. Whether they can win or not, it doesn't worry me. As long as they're very, very competitive to the end. Mm. And if they are, they've got a chance to win. We're playing the best side that's been around for eight years. There's no yep. one been better than the Cats. If they can roll them over, we're well on our way. And if even if we lose this game, and this, that could happen, and we all understand there's a 50-50 chance, and they're competitive their first three weeks, we're still in the best eight sides of the competition, and we can get there. West Coast and Adelaide to come after that. It's a big three weeks. We knew it was going to be a tough opening five games to the season. Uh, it's a big three weeks to come. Before we go, we'd like to welcome MC Services on board as our new match ball sponsor. Very nice work from you. You haven't lost your touch. Well, the boys will be kicking... Fumble it a bit, but still. Around... <laughs> It was a poor throw from Joe. Oh, it was a shocker. It was yeah. a terrible throw. The Wouldn't boys will be kicking thought. around this new look sharing in their home matches over the next three years, uh, which is a fantastic thing. Great to have MC on board. Sellers? One thing you do, don't blame yourself ever. You know that. I never will. I know. No, no, no. You always blame the blokes throwing it to you, that's for sure. That's all we've got time for on today's show. We'll be back for another edition of The Blueprint in round five, but this time on a Friday due to Anzac Day, which will make it the 26th of April. Until then, enjoy your footy bye for now.